Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And we got more proof of concept exploits for January's Microsoft patches. The latest one is for CBE 2022-2188-2. This is a privilege escalation vulnerability and it's affecting most versions of Windows. Source code for the proof of concept exploit has been made available on GitHub, so expect it to show up in various other tools and malware shortly. And well, then we got more browser tracking, this time via the GPU. Uh, no real big surprise here, but uh, with WebGL, it's possible to essentially access uh, the GPU, the graphics processor on a system rather directly. And by looking at timing differences in how long it takes to execute certain uh, functions, you may be able to deduct uh, the power and the kind of uh, GPU that's in a system, which of course gives you another parameter to identify and distinguish between different uh, users. Not too much you can do about this. Uh, you could turn off WebGL. Uh, some browsers actually allow that, but uh, there are some notable sites. Uh, for example, the paper here notes Microsoft Office, Google Maps, Amazon that uh, do take advantage of a WebGL. So your user experience on these sites may at least uh, be uh, limited. And Sophos got an interesting write-up of malware that uh, they are calling Solar Marker. Now, uh, this uh, malware apparently gets distributed a lot via search engine optimization, and the user downloads the malware thinking that it installs a legitimate application, which it actually still does. It does install uh, the legitimate application, at least in some cases. So that makes it a little bit uh, more difficult to figure out that uh, the user also installed some malware. Also an interesting persistence mechanism here. It does add a link file to the system's startup directory, but that link file points to a random uh, named file with a random extension. So not something that you would commonly believe to be executed, but then they're also making registry changes to actually uh, set up an application that will execute when uh, the script with this particular extension is being launched. So this is kind of how they, in a little bit of backwards way, uh, execute uh, this file. The malware itself is an information stealer. It also implements a backdoor, so there could be additional uh, follow-up attacks to this. It has been around in some form until back in 2020. And the FBI posted an advisory warning of fake job ads. Uh, this is something I've heard of also quite a bit. Uh, actually, a little preview here. Uh, we do have a research paper with sans.edu coming up that talks a little bit about how companies may be able to defend against uh, these type of attacks. But uh, the general problem here is that criminals are setting up fake job ads attempting to impersonate well-known companies. And then they're trying to essentially get people to submit their applications. They will usually hire them, no big surprise here. And then there are a couple of different follow-up attacks here. Sometimes it's just about personal information because it's part of the job application process. You will typically have to submit quite a bit of personal identifiable information. Then in some cases, they even try to get money out of the victims by getting them to buy equipment and other uh, things like that. So uh, definitely uh, be careful when you're applying for a job that you are applying to a legitimate company. This has, of course, uh, been even more difficult now with a lot of the interview process happening uh, remotely. But as a rule of thumb, you definitely should not be asked to pay for anything as a part of starting a job with a company. 
Now, from a defensive point of view, as far as the companies are concerned, uh, quite often these scams involve uh, lookalike domain names, but they also use uh, common uh, known job boards. So you may want to keep an eye out for any ads that impersonate your company on particular uh, job advertising sites. And then in diaries today, we got a quick one from Xavier talking about some of the dangers of over automating your job. I love automations. I rather spend a day writing a script than 10 minutes doing the same thing twice. But in particular, when it comes to vulnerability scanning and penetration testing, a manual checkup is always important to make sure that the tools aren't lying. And uh, Xavier here has an interesting example with SSH servers and how the result from uh, the automated tool wasn't quite what he then found. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.